G'day viewers, out here in the south coast of New South Wales, man it's an absolute pearl of a day hey, such a nice summer's day, um, although that wind's starting to pick up now a little bit so hopefully it doesn't get too much stronger because otherwise it's going to make it pretty difficult in this canoe, we're going to get knocked around a fair bit, I think it's also meant to maybe um, rain or even thunderstorm a bit later on so fingers crossed it doesn't but yeah see how we go. Uh, this is a new area for me, so I've never actually been here before, so yeah, really keen to check the place out. So far, so good. Beautiful country. Nice um, spotted gums and casserinas lying on the bank. Yeah, seems like a nice place to camp, so. I've also got the fishing rod with me, as usual, so yeah, see how we go this time. Uh, you get a fair few flathead and brim in this, in this lake, so I feel like today could be my lucky day. I have said that before, but... <laughs> I reckon um, I've got a good chance today, so. But yeah, probably not going to waste uh, too much time because this wind's starting to pick up a fair bit, so kind of keen to go find a uh, fairly sheltered position and yeah, set up camp and yeah, give the fishing a go. So yeah, let's see what we can find. I guess I won't be wearing that today. <laughs> Bloody hell. <laughs> I think it's too windy for a hat. Damn it. <laughs> How's this? There's jellyfish absolutely everywhere. Yeah, I think we could be in luck with this fishing today. Heaps of little baby fish swimming everywhere, and like I said, there was those jellyfish before, and lots of mullet jumping out, so I think we could be in luck here, which is good. The wind's kind of died off a little bit, but yeah, the sun's getting pretty hot. It's definitely got a bit of a bite to it today. I chucked my hat on, but it's still pretty soaking wet from before when it fell off into the water. So I might just uh, yeah wait a little bit, let it dry off a bit, and chuck it on. But I think I might get the fishing rod out now, and. Uh, yeah, cast the line and see if I can catch anything. Alright, I reckon we're going to pull over here somewhere for a little bit and have some lunch. Maybe get the fishing rod together and yeah, then head out after that. And this grass, or whatever it is, so comfy to walk on. It's like carpet. So good. Then uh, tuck back here amongst all the casserinas. It's actually not a bad little spot you could set up camp. Plenty of trees to tie a hammock between. Lots of flat ground. Yeah, it's actually a pretty cool little spot. Not a bad view either. Working up a bit of a, a thirst out there in the sun today. It's getting pretty hot out there, but uh, definitely gonna have to put some sunscreen back on before I head back out because I'm gonna get pretty roasted otherwise. For lunch today, I've just got a packet Italian style salad with tuna. Was the brand's called Serena? It's actually really nice. Hey, I'm not a big tuna for, um, fan, but for some reason in this, it's a uh, yeah, pretty tasty. Oh, I've also got a plum. Can we just take a moment just to uh, really appreciate how good plums are? <laughs> I absolutely love these. Fruit of the gods, I reckon. So, so good and tasty. Um, actually, I've got to stop saying um. I've had so many people <laughs> comment me saying that I say um a lot. And yeah, apparently. Apparently I say yeah and um. So I've got to try and work on not saying that so much. Just a habit. Also not super confident in front of the camera yet, so that's probably a little bit why I do it, but anyway. 
Uh, yeah, this place, absolutely loving this this uh, lake here. Beautiful country, especially like a day like today when it's so sunny, absolutely sparkles out on the water. It's really nice. Although this wind's getting a little bit annoying. It's getting, it's getting pretty strong to be honest and the sun knocked me around a fair bit in the canoe and I'm kind of like, yeah, it's pretty hard to keep a straight line, but I'm kind of hoping it's gonna die down a bit later because yeah, the last thing I kind of, I don't really want to have a fire when it's, uh, when it's this windy because yeah, it's just not very safe. So hoping that by sunset, it kind of dies back a bit. Otherwise I'll just have to find somewhere really sheltered and yeah, just so that way I don't have any issues with it. But a place like this seems to be pretty sheltered here. So I'm actually kind of liking it here too. It's got a nice little grassy patch and plenty of trees to hang up a hammock behind me. So I'll still go for a bit more of a paddle around, but if I can't find anything, I might even come back here and yeah, just camp up here tonight because it's a pretty nice spot. So yeah, just fingers crossed that uh, that wind dies back a bit. It was meant to be windiest during the day. So yeah, let's hope the weather report's right. Anyway, I'm just going to finish off this for a bit and I'll yeah, get back out of the water soon and see if I can catch a fish. <laughs> uh, so just after telling you guys I've got to stop saying yeah so much, I probably said it another 15 times. Uh, sorry guys, <laughs> it's probably going to take me a little while um, to try and yeah, weed it out of my vocabulary, but I think it's a pretty Aussie thing to do actually. Uh, when I think about it, we tend to add yeah in, in places where you don't really need to add it. Like for example, yeah, a good example actually is when you want to say no to something, like say if someone goes, oh, do you want a can of Coke or something? Uh, a pretty common response is, yeah, nah, it's all right. So I don't know why we add the yeah in front of the nah, but yeah, especially in New South Wales, it's a big thing. I don't know about the rest of Australia, but yeah, saying yeah, nah, doesn't make much sense to the rest of the world, but to us, it makes perfect sense. <laughs> so yeah, give me time to try and work on that. I'll uh, yeah, do my best to try and weed it out. So much windier out here in the middle of the lake. Probably got nipples flying everywhere. <laughs> where I was before, where I was having lunch, was a nice little secluded part. I think I might have to head back to somewhere like that because out here it's just too windy. Oh, and I can't even put my hat on, it just keeps blowing off. So, yeah, if I don't get out of the sun pretty soon, I'm probably gonna get pretty scorched. So, I think we'll try and find a nice little secluded spot to go for a fish. So I've pulled up in the canoe because man, it's getting so windy out there. Probably tell why the trees swaying. But uh, yeah, what I wanted to show you was uh, this plant. It's called a cycad. There's so many of them around here. Such a cool prehistoric looking plant. I think it dates back like, yeah, 150, 200 million years. So it's a very, very old plant. Don't quote me on that, but I'm pretty sure that's what I've read before. But uh, the reason I want to show you it is it's a really good bush tucker plant to know. So at the right time of year, it produces kind of like a pineapple fruit in the center of it. And down here, we can see a, an old one that's dried up. So you can see it's a fairly large, fairly large um, fruit. So you get a fair bit of food out of it. The only the thing with it is it's super, super poisonous. So you gotta be really careful with it. Aborigines used to basically pick out the fruit. It's kind of like a starchy fruit. And then you basically soak it in water for days or even weeks to leach out all the toxins. And then it's, um, fine to eat but yeah it's one of those things you're not going to be doing if you just sort of going on your daily hikes but if you're in a survival situation and you needed some food this is a good plant because yeah you get fairly large quantities out of it so it's a very very cool looking plant i've actually got one of these in my front garden <laughs> and i love them but they're super spiky these leaves so just gotta be careful with them
And this is some stunning country. These spotted gum trees are absolutely beautiful. So big. The best thing about this kind of country is it's so much easier to walk through the bush. Back where I usually go, back up at home, it's so dense and scrubby. This is lovely. <laughs> Man, check out this old girl. She's a beauty. Look at the size of her. She's also lost one of her branches as well recently. You would not want that falling on top of you. Now that would ruin your day. So you've always got to be careful when you're setting up camp under sort of eucalypt trees because yeah, they have a habit of dropping their limbs. So. Yeah, just always be wary about what's above you. Man, how beautiful is the markings on the spotted gum. I absolutely love this tree. I think a spot up here would be nice to camp. Looks nice and clear. Yeah, I think this will do for camp tonight. Fairly clear area. What I like about this spot is the trees are nicely spaced apart, so you should be able to hang up the hammock and the tarp fairly easily. It's also relatively clear to have a fire. Just got to clear away some of the the leaves and the needles, and I think we should be good to go, but it's a nice spot. Alright, let's get that all set up. Ah oh, damn, that was a shame. I was just walking along and came across the kangaroo and it's a little jolly. So I went back to try and grab the camera, but by the time I got back to the spot they were gone. Which is always going to be the case, but yeah, pretty cool though. I get asked all the time what kind of hammocks I use for these wild camps. And that wind just changed. <laughs> Hopefully it doesn't stay this way because then I'll be a little bit screwed. Hmm. Let's see what happens. Anyway. Yeah, so I always get asked what kind of hammocks I use for these wild camps. And the brand that I use is Alton Goods. They're a local Aussie brand based out of Queensland and they make really good quality hammocks. I've been using them for a couple of years now and never had any issues with them. Uh, they also make sort of straps, hammock straps as well and uh, they've got tarps and fly nets as well. So if you're in the market for, for a hammock, definitely check them out. It's always good to support local Aussie brands. The good thing about these straps is they're really long, so if you've got trees a um, wide distance apart, you know it's going to reach. Now just give me a beer and I'm set. Then I've just got the standard DD Hammock 3x3 metre top.
Right, so for this one, I'm just going to do a taut line hitch. So just take the end, put it through the, the inside, and then again through the inside, and then take it around the outside and back through the little loop you just made. And then tighten that off. It's really nice, handy knot. That just moves up and down nice and easily. The cinch is down. All right, for this side, I can't remember what the knot's called, but I'm just gonna wrap around the tree. And back around there. And over here, it's gonna sort of make a, a loop. I'm get my fingers and wrap it over and twist it over again. And then yeah, just grab that tailing end and you pull through and if you really want to you can put a toggle through that or you just wrap it around again you got a nice taut line and look at those clouds We've got a big storm coming through I think I'm gonna get absolutely belted soon and there's the wind <laughs> just as I speak. So we're just going to do a pressing knot. So we've just got a length of cord just tied off just to make a loop. Just going to wrap that through. And do the same thing again. Just gonna make a nice little fist. And just grab that loop, put the stick through there. And yeah, pull it up and it'll bite down on, on this cord, keep it nice and secure. Because we've got this storm coming in, I decided to just do your standard A-frame tarp shelter over the hammock, just to get those sides right down close to the ground. So hopefully, if it does get a bit rainy and windy, hopefully it doesn't get up underneath and wet the hammock. So we'll see how we go. Well, I think the storm's right on top of me at the moment. Because it is really windy. I've tried my hardest to secure that as close to the ground as I can, but it is getting hammered. And the trees are going mental. I've looked above me for any sort of dead branches or anything overhanging the tarp and I think I should be sweet but it's still pretty sketchy when it's like this yeah it stays like this all night but I don't know how fun it's going to be I'm really hoping this is fast over I think it might, if it's kind of seen patches of blue sky so fingers crossed it does otherwise it's going to be pretty miserable going to start collecting some sticks while I can just in case it does rain I'll just chuck them under there to keep them dry that way I can get a fire started if the rain stops it kind of looks like it's um, passing over now so we might be alright this place is stick city sticks everywhere Going to clear a little area for the fire. There's a lot of leaves around here, so we want to try and be as safe as possible. So we're just going to try and make a pretty big 
clear area just so no embers are going to fly and, and start a fire. Yeah, so it's kind of calmed down a little bit now. The wind's dropped off a bit. It hasn't rained yet, so I don't know if that's still to come or not, but yeah, it's kind of, fingers crossed it's just blowing over us, hopefully. Still pretty dark behind me there, but over there it's blue sky, so let's hope the clouds are going that way. It's kind of um, mucked up a lot of my plans <laughs> this afternoon. So I got here about 4.30, 5 o'clock, started getting set up. Now I had this um, pretty much set up by, yeah, by 6 o'clock. And that's when the storm came across, but I was hoping to go out and go fishing for a good hour or so. It's now just after seven, just because I've been wanting to wait here in case the storm got pretty severe. And so, yeah, it's kind of, I don't know. Oh, there's a fish. I haven't really got much time to go fishing now. Probably got about 45 minutes or so. So maybe I'll chuck the canoe out now and just see if I can catch anything and fingers crossed again. There we go. The sun's just popped out, which is nice. If it stays like that. Yeah, it's turned into an absolute beautiful afternoon. This sunset is going to be a cracker, I reckon. With all the clouds in the sky. Who would have thought just an hour ago? <laughs> it's like Armageddon. So I've just got the a squidgy on the rod. Um, I'm just gonna go head over to this little sand bank over here and see if I can just maybe rustle up some flathead or something off that. Fingers crossed. And the lighting at the moment, it's beautiful. Hopefully the sun's not too, too bad in the lens, but the lighting on the trees, absolutely lovely. Wind's died off a fair bit as well, which is good. That was crazy. I cannot believe how strong that was. I was almost got, thought I was gonna rip the tent, so the tarp in half. A few mozzies out tonight. So, I'm probably gonna get pretty hammered later on when I go to sleep. Yeah, so, just got a little squidgy. I was watching you some YouTube videos about how to catch the flathead. I was saying to do like a little double tap of the, the tip of the rod. We'll see how it goes. Seaweed and more seaweed. Well, I'm failing miserably at fishing, so next best thing is crack open a beer. Enjoy the sunset. Can't believe how nice it's turned out for this sunset. Beautiful. Man, this beer is delicious. Filter XBA. If you haven't tried before and you like your pale ales, man, so, so good. Well, what do they say? A bad day of fishing is better than a good day at work. Guess we can try and throw a positive spin on it, hey? And it's so nice this time. There's like no one on this lake. I think I've seen one person today. Literally like one craft. It's crazy. This is a sat day as well, in summer. <laughs> Not bad. Oh, oh. Oh. I actually got a fishy. Oh shit. <laughs> I actually got myself a flathead. Oh. 
Calm down, buddy. Calm down. Calm down. Ah. Stop down. Come on, buddy. Nice little fuddy. Cannot believe that. <laughs> First. <laughs> All right, time to get back in the water. See you, buddy. Oh, man. <laughs> First fuddy. Nice. Very poorly executed bringing him in and getting the hook out of his mouth. That was an absolute shocker, and I'm sure I'm going to get a lot of comments about that. But, um,. I have not fished for 15 plus years. So that was the first fish I've caught in a very, very long time. So yeah, <laughs> lots to learn, but nice. Not bad, not bad at all. All right, let's see if I can do that again. So I didn't even realize that, like I could barely even feel the other flathead on the line. I kind of thought I was just getting snagged for a second and then all of a sudden, started to fight back so that's pretty cool <laughs> but seriously poorly poorly executed bringing him into the boat that was a shocker even though I know that so, can't wait for all the comments I'm going to get and for anyone who's new to my channel realize that this is probably the third time I've been fishing in yeah about 15 years or so so cut me a bit of slack <laughs> Try my best. It's pretty hard when you try and learn learn something new and you're showcasing it to the whole world. Yeah, such a nice sunset. There's barely any clouds in the sky sky now except for the ones around there. It's very clear. What a difference. Definitely think of worse places to be. Oh, 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 could be on. I just had another bite. That was a good little bite. Alright, last cast, and I'm gonna go back and get this fire started. <laughs> Maybe one more cast. <laughs> oh, I suck. Okay, let's call it a day. is the sunset. Absolutely gorgeous. The wind has died right off. Man, this is such a nice night. 
What a difference to two hours ago. <sighs> so good. Oh man, this wind just won't let up, hey. It's come back pretty strong again. So I've tried to use the canoe as a bit of a windbreak, but it's not doing the best job. It's just kind of going around the canoe. A little bit sketched out about getting the canoe too close to the fire as well. And it's just creating a whole lot of smoke. Kind of a bit of a smoke ceremony for the canoe. Um, I think I'm just going to pack it up, hey. It's already quarter past nine, so it's getting pretty late. So I'm not even going to bother cooking dinner. I was going to make cauliflower tacos tonight, but yeah. I don't know, I'm just a bit sketched out about this fire and embers blowing away, so I'd rather just put it out, maybe just have some biltong and a piece of fruit, and then just go to bed. It's a bit of a shame, but anyway, I'll just cook the tacos next time. So, always got to think about fire safety first. So, anyway, uh, see you guys in the morning. Good morning guys, I uh, woke up to such a nice morning this morning, so nice and calm and still, no clouds, seems like it's going to be a really nice day, but um, yeah, so it got pretty windy when I was going to bed last night, so I decided to pull the canoe underneath the tarp, and I just got some rope and tied it to the, the loops of the tarp, and then wrapped it underneath and tied it to the canoe, so that way it really cinched the tarp down and yeah, seemed to do a pretty good job. Yeah, such a lovely morning this morning. So nice and calm. So I think I'm like, it's actually pretty chilly this morning, surprisingly. Um, yeah, it's pretty cold, so I might try and get a little fire going and get some brekkie on and just warm up.
Man, how nice is it this morning? Absolute perla. It's no wind, no clouds, and no one else in the water. Can't get much better than that. Not a bad view to wake up to, eh? Man, I love this stuff. Yeah, yesterday afternoon, a bit of a disaster that one. <laughs> Nothing really went to plan, did it? And that um yeah, that storm and that wind just really knocked me around. Just kind of like, yeah, blew every plan I had out of the water. <laughs> yeah, I was really kinda of hoping to get a fair bit of fishing in the Salvo, but couldn't have spent a good hour and a half trying to hunker down the, the tarp shelter so it didn't blow away. Bit unfortunate, but at least I managed to get out there and catch a little fish, which is good. Well, like I said, probably the first fish I've caught in about 15 years or so. <laughs> so yeah, hell of what I can pr and improve on, but uh, yeah, it's a start, I think. Um, last night was really cold, eh? I, got, like, I only bought my summer sleeping bag thinking it was going to be quite warm since yesterday was hot. And man, it got pretty chilly last night. Maybe I'm just a bit of a cold sleeper, but yeah, it got pretty cold. And I sort of woke up at about maybe about three o'clock or something, and to the weirdest noise. It sounded like I could hear footsteps coming uh, through the bush towards the, the shelter. I thought it was a kangaroo to start with because it sounded like I was hopping, and then, it's, then it kind of went away, and then it came back and it sounded like it was walking. And then it stopped and made the weirdest sound. For about five minutes, it was making this, I don't even know how to describe it. It was like a, uh, <laughs> it's so, it was so weird. It was like someone screaming in the bush, but not quite a scream, like a really weird, weird sound. It sounded like it was a yowie or something like that. But um, yeah, that kind of like freaked me out for a bit because I was like, I had no clue. I've never heard a kangaroo make a sound like that before. So yeah, so I <laughs> quickly kind of um, yeah reached down for the for the knife and kind of kept that next to me just in case um, yeah something happened, but. Eventually, uh, yeah, got my head torch after a while and sort of shone it out of into the darkness. And I saw, um, yeah, two eyes looking back at me. So it was a pretty decent sized kangaroo. So yeah, glad to know it was a kangaroo and not someone creeping around the the tarp. <laughs> but it's, yeah, such a weird sound. I've never heard that before. Uh, it looked like it might have been a male. So maybe it was a mating call, perhaps. I've no idea. If you guys have ever heard of it, um, yeah, let us know because I'm stumped, eh? But um, yeah, that kind of freaked me out for a little bit. It's probably the weirdest thing I've heard in the bush at night. You quite often get possums and stuff making weird noises, but uh, never a kangaroo and never that close to the tent either. So yeah, a bit sketchy, but um, yeah, beautiful morning this morning. So I think I'm gonna pack this down pretty quickly and get out there and go for a little bit of a fish. It's probably about nine o'clock, so I've got a bit of time to muck around with. So I'm gonna get out there and yeah, see if I can catch something else. Um, yeah, anyway, let's get this knocked down. Always make sure the fire is well and truly out before you leave any campsite. Then give it a little stir around, just make like a big slushy to really make sure it's all out. Yeah, so that should do. Cool to touch.
All right, so I've packed everything up. I've um, made sure the fire is well and truly out and then I covered it with a bit of debris just to make it look like no one was here. Also picked up some rubbish that some other grubs left behind. It's always better to leave a place better than you found it, I reckon. Now time to get back in the canoe and go for a little bit of a fish. Just got a little squidgy on again. It's what I was using yesterday and caught the flatty off it, so we'll give this another go. Yeah, so there's this little sandbar running down here, and also the wind's going that way, so I'm thinking about if I just drift down here and see if I can catch anything. Man, this weather today is absolutely beautiful. Feels like autumn almost. It's a little bit, bit of a freshness in the air. Compared to yesterday where it was stinking hot. Man, so, so nice. There's just no one out on the water. I think I've seen, uh, I saw one person just before in a little kayak. But that's about it, eh? So nice. There's another little sandbar running along here, so I'm gonna give that a go. <laughs> Got caught in the back of the canoe. <laughs> How nice is a bush up there? Let's go have a look. I'm just going to have one more go and cast on these fallen trees and with no luck then we have to call it quits because it's starting to get a little bit late. Got to get out of here pretty soon. Let's we'll see how we go. No deal. <laughs> oh well. Caught one yesterday so that's all that matters I guess. <laughs> At least it's a start. It's still nice being out this morning on the water. Such a beautiful, beautiful morning. All right, let's head on back. 
All right, guys, well, now it's me done for this trip. Uh, the wind's just started to pick up a little bit, so it's probably a good time to call it quits and head on back. Yeah, really enjoyed it. Had such a nice weekend. Such a beautiful part of the world. Uh, definitely going to come back here in the future. Uh, pretty stoked to get to catch, finally get to catch a fish this afternoon. Uh, bit of a shame I couldn't get in this morning, but at least I got one, so that's a start. Hope I can try and uh, keep it up in future. Um, yeah, a little bit of a shame as well that my plans kind of got a bit rattled yesterday afternoon. Didn't quite go to plan, but that's mother nature for her. She kind of does what she wants, so just got to adapt, I guess. But yeah, it's still kind of cool watching the storm roll in. I'm glad it didn't get any stronger because it would have made it pretty miserable last night. But yeah, got beautiful weather today though, at least. Anyway, I uh, hope you guys enjoyed this video. And uh, as always, thanks for watching and I'll see you next time. Hooroo.